Hi everyone and welcome to the first session on deviation from social norms as a definition of abnormality. And in this session we'll introduce the definition and some key concepts that you'll need to know. Let's start by looking at what social norms actually are. They're expectations that a society or culture may have about how to behave. They're implicit rules about how to and how not to behave in society. For example, when you go to the shops, you're expected to wait in an orderly queue until it is your turn to be served. So one distinction to make a note of here is that they're not explicit rules or expectations. This would be instead the law. So when you talk about social norms, it's really important that you do distinguish between implicit and explicit rules. Implicit rules are the one that you'll talk about, but explicit rules you, you'll never really talk about. So if you're talking about something like the law, then we're in the wrong territory for social norms. So it's not likely you'll really ever have to describe what social norms are. Instead, the focus will be on how we deviate from social norms. So a good tip is to ensure that you're always talking about breaking away from the social norms and that will really help you to keep the right perspective in your answers. So what do we mean by deviating away from social norms? So this means behaving in ways that are not in line with the implicit rules of society. In other words, deviating from the norms and expectations. For example, wearing no shoes, walking barefoot when you go to the local supermarket. Let's have a quick thinking activity. So consider the following questions and make a list of suggestions. Now, when you're thinking of your suggestions, avoid examples where the law is broken, since, as we've just said, this is explicit rather than an implicit rule. So you can pause the video here for five minutes while you jot your answers down. I'm sure you were able to come up with at least a few suggestions, but here are some more that you can add to your list. So walking up the stairs at work on all fours would be a deviation from social norms for an adult. Wearing a bikini when you take your dog to the vets, again, for an adult, this would be deviating from the norm. Laughing at a funeral, well, I'm sure you would agree that this would apply for anybody, any age. Asking personal questions to strangers on the train home from work. Drinking alcohol at 11am on your day off. Picking your nose at the till in a shop, passing wind loudly in the middle of an exam and breaking into song in a school assembly. So lots of examples for deviating from social norms. And the key thing to note for all those examples and hopefully yours is that they're all focused on what it means to not follow social norms. Now, what it's also worth bearing in mind in this introduction is cultural differences, especially when it comes to looking at norms and expectations of behaviour. So as with social norms in societies, cultural beliefs and norms also influence our expectations of behaviour. Lots of examples, but one we'll use for now. In the UK, we prefer approximately 100 centimetres between us and other people, and that's for personal distance, that's our preference. But in other cultures, such as those in Argentina, and there's lots more examples as well, less personal space is preferred. So to us, it would deviate from our social norm, but somewhere else, this would be normal behaviour. So this demonstrates that deviation from social norms also needs to take cultural beliefs into account. For another task, let's read the scenario and suggest reasons why this person may be considered abnormal according to deviation from social norms. So pause the video for five minutes while you read the question and read the scenario and you can jot your answers down. So now that you've got your answers to that task, what you can do is compare them to the following criteria. So credit where the answers would include being rude to colleagues. We can see that in the scenario where she doesn't want anyone to touch her belongings. Being ambiguous, so offering to make drinks but refusing to make certain drinks. So I, I think we'd all agree that was not normal practice. Crossing the line. And we can see this evidenced where she's asking a new colleague to lend her £100. And being too loud at work. Non-credit worthy answers, so these are things that wouldn't get a mark. Using offensive language on the phone, 
and taking items from where home and not bringing them back. Now, these aren't things that we would normally do. However, these two things in particular are actually breaking the law. So they will be examples of where explicit norms and explicit rules are broken. So the four main ones we want to talk about, you can see on the top. So give yourself a mark or a tick if you included any of those in your answer. Let's give that another go since this is a really important exam skill and it's also warming up your AO2 skills at the same time. So pause for another five minutes, read the scenario and suggest reasons why this person may be abnormal according to deviation from social norms. Again, let's see if you hit the criteria. So creditworthy answers would include sitting next to someone when the bus is already empty uh, and, and we can link this back to us liking our personal space. Playing music through his phone on the bus. Ignoring the request from the other passenger. Reading the other person's newspaper. And this time the non-credit where the answers are putting his rubbish on the floor and swearing under his breath when asked to stop. And that's again because those two examples are explicit. So they're breaking the law. And you may not know this, but it is actually breaking the law to swear in public, to swear under his breath. Yes, it's offensive and yes, it's not what we would normally do. But in this case, this is an explicit rule break rather than an implicit rule break.